Okay, some people wanted me to expound just a little bit more on composition of functions using maps or what I also call arrow diagrams, which is probably more descriptive here. So I will call it arrow diagrams here. So I'll run through a quick example uh, here. Uh, let's go ahead and say that we had, uh, let's suppose that we have a function I'm calling f, and it consists of the following orders, ordered pairs. 1, 2, 3, 7, 5, 11, and 6, 12. Okay, so just a simple little function here. Uh, is it actually a function? Well, we'll see here. Well, I, there. I'll promise you they actually are functions here. But that's something you would have to consider, right? It may just be a general relation. It may not be a function at all. Okay, you would have to test and see if, it, if it's true that corresponding to every element of the domain, there's one and only one element of the range. Okay, but let's go ahead and we'll see that with the arrow diagram. This is indeed a function, and so is g here that we'll discuss in a second. What's the domain of f? The domain of f is found by what? Just uh, picking off the first element of each ordered pair and forming one big set from it, all right? So my domain, which I call D sub F, my domain of F is what? One, three, five, six. Again, this is a set also, so it doesn't really matter what order you write those elements in. I could say three, one, six, five, and it would still be the same domain, the same set. Okay, do you remember the range? What was the range? That's a set of all second values here. That would be, what, uh, 2, 7, 11, 12. Okay, so I've written them that way. If we were to imagine these as ordered pairs x, y in the Cartesian plane, then these would be the x values of the points. These would be, what, the y values of those points. Okay, the domain and range. Now, what is the corresponding arrow diagram corresponding to f? Well, first of all, when I make my arrow diagrams, just as a default position here, I always put the domain here on the left, so I'm going from left to right. So the domain elements I write as a column here on the left, so that would be what? One, three, five, six. Again, you could change the order if you want. Uh, on the left, I've got the range elements, two, seven, 11, 12. All right, and now to illustrate our uh, function here, uh, I'm gonna have what? I've got the ordered pair one, two, I signify that as what? One arrow points at two, okay? Don't forget your arrowheads when you're doing this also. See that there? You gotta show what, which direction this is pointing, okay? Um, anyways, always do that, okay? Just for emphasis here. Okay, so it's coming uh, this way. Because some people might actually get the domain and range mixed up and switch those. This should be clear from the direction of the arrows also for emphasis here. Anyway, okay, so f at 1, or f1, f of 3 is 7, f of 5 is 11, f of 6 is 12, okay? All right, so this contains exactly the same information as this, but when you look at it this way, you can see very clearly that f is a function. Is it true that corresponding to every value of the domain here, there's one and only one value of the range. Uh, clearly, that is in fact the case. If you had a situation like this, where this was, you know, this was pointing at another value here, over here, you could tell that would make it a relation, but not a function, huh? Okay, all right. So one value go, come drops into the function, only one value pops out, okay? All right, one value of the domain anyway. Some, if it's the value's not in the domain, of course, if it drops into the function, nothing comes out, right? Okay, uh, I've got a second function here that I'm calling g. Let's go ahead and see this. This is the ordered pairs 2, 3, 7, 7, 8, 4, 11, 1. So I just made it up here, okay? Again, the domain of g would be what? 2, 7, 8, 11, okay, the first elements. The range three seven four one. Okay, again you could change the order. Let's go ahead and write this. So again with my default position, the domain on the left and the range on the right. Two seven eight eleven written as a column, and the elements three seven four one uh, as a column here on the right. All right. So these elements are pointing at these elements here. These are the dependent ones. 
these are the independent ones we think of it this way you can clearly see that this is in fact a function again just like uh, f up there okay all right so that's uh, two functions that have gone from what um, sets of ordered pairs to arrow diagrams okay now we don't use arrow diagrams a whole lot but they're really good for illustrating composition of functions okay the idea behind them so that's what i'm going to do here okay all right so you should understand this all right let's go on now what i'm going to do is compose these functions using an arrow diagram all right that's not goff what is that that's that little open empty dot that's g of f or g composed with f again i'm going to want that as what an arrow diagram and as a set of ordered pairs so if I give you an arrow diagram, you should be able to go back to what ordered pairs, or if I give you ordered pairs, you should be able to go back to an arrow diagram. Okay, so the second part is going to be easy here. Uh, let's work the first part, uh, the composition using an arrow diagram, uh, arrow diagrams actually. Now the first thing I want to point out here, you've got to be a little bit careful here when you set up your uh, arrow diagrams down here at the bottom. When I'm going g composed with f of x, or what is the same thing, g of f of x, what am I actually computing or finding first? Okay, I use computed in quotes because I'm not actually doing any arithmetic here. I'm just following arrows. Um, f is computed, quote unquote, first, then g, right? You need to know the value of f of x first for any particular x value, and then what that result drops into g right okay so you're actually although they're written what if you read from left to right g of f the thing that's actually computed or found first is actually what the f so in my arrow diagram here i'm doing everything from left to right okay what is actually going to come first even though it's g of f f is going to come first okay so i'm going to draw what here first on the left i'm going to draw the uh, arrow diagram for f there i've got it there and then on the right hand side i've got g which is going to be the what the second thing i actually found so i'm coming this way so that's uh, g i've got that arrow diagram written right there okay and now i'm going to compose them okay and i'll go ahead and use uh, i guess i can just use the dark pen here g of f of uh, various values here now we're going to start in here um, the domain of this function g of f is going to have to be a subset of the domain of f because the first thing to find the composition, at the very least, f of x has to exist, right? If I take a value of x and drop it in here such that f of x doesn't even exist, well, there's not going to be a composition, okay? So uh, the domain of this is going to be a subset, possibly the whole set, but a subset of the domain of f here. So I'm going to start with 1 here, okay? So 1 drops into f, right? So I think of f of 1, okay? Now f of 1 is actually what here? You can see from the arrow diagram that its value is 2. So this inside part, that would be 2, and then I'm trying to find what? g of 2. What's g of 2? It is what? 3. So do you see I started with 1, and ended with what? 3. So in my composition, 1 points at 3 as an arrow diagram. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. 3 drops into f, and what pops out is 7, right? Okay, so the center part would be 7 now. 7 drops into g, and I get what? 7 popping out. Oh, yeah, it doesn't change g 7 at all, g doesn't. So I started with 3 and ended with 7. Okay, now let's drop in 5. 5 goes into f. Okay, f of 5 is 11, and then I'm trying to do what? Find g of 11. g of 11 is 1. So I started with 5. 5 turned into 11, which got transformed into what? 1. Okay, so there I go. Now let's try 6. 6 drops into f. f of 6 is what? 12, according to this. g of 12 is nothing. g doesn't do anything with 12, right? 12 is not part of the domain of g. 
So what do I do? What, what does six point at? It points at nothing. Six is not part of the domain of the composition. Okay, so this is it because I've gone through all the domain elements of F. This is it. This is my composition right here. Now, do you see how to kind of sort of quickly get the composition of these functions from the arrow di diagrams? Well, it was pretty easy. All you did was follow the arrows out, right? One uh, went to two, two went to three, so one goes to three, okay? Three pointed at seven over here, seven pointed at seven, so three points at seven. Five points to 11, 11 points at one, so ultimately five points at one. Six points to 12, points at 12, 12 doesn't go anywhere, so that's it, okay? So do you guys see how to compose these functions using the arrow diagrams, okay? Remember, you gotta get these all these things in the right order though. Okay, just a warning here. Oh, our last question here, write it as a set of ordered pairs. This is easy. Okay, so these are the domain elements and these are the range elements. You can see the arrows. Okay, again, don't forget those arrowheads. Uh, these are the ordered pairs then, pretty simply. Okay. All right. Oh, there it is. Okay, now there. These are relaying exactly the same information. Let's do uh, one last uh, problem involving this so we keep it short. What about fog? Okay, that's not really fog. F of G. Okay, F of G, right? Okay, let me just remind you if I'm going to find F of G of X, that's F of G of X written this way. You're actually finding G first. You got to find the value of the inner function first and then compute or find the value of f second, okay? So, since g has to be found first, that's the inner function here, I'm writing what? g on the left, and then that drops into f, so f comes over here on the right. Now, I just wrote the arrow diagrams for each of them, respectively, right here, and let's go ahead and find the composition, if it exists. By the way, in some cases like this, what? The composition can be empty. There may, be, may not be a composition at all. Okay, we could easily uh, create functions that way. Just think about what you'd need to do here. Okay, oh, I should mention on the last one, just to reemphasize again, you notice that the domain of G of F over here was a subset of what? The domain of F. I said it before, but let's do it for emphasis here. Okay, but it's not the entire domain of F, right? Okay, you notice six is missing here. Okay, how about on this one then? Okay, this means the domain of this thing, whatever it is, is going to be a subset of what? The domain of G, because that has to exist before you can even start here. So it's going to be a subset of 2, 7, 8, 11. Okay, now let's think about what happens here. Okay, 2 drops into G. Okay, so I'm computing G of 2. That ends up being 3, and then I go F of 3 is 7. Okay. So two points at seven. So like we were doing at the end of the last problem, two points at three, three points at seven, so ultimately two points at seven in the composition. Okay, seven points to seven. What does uh, F do with seven? Nothing. Seven is not part of the domain of F, okay? So seven led nowhere. How about uh, eight? Eight points to four. What does F do with four? Again, it can't do anything with it. Okay, so we have a pretty small function this time, the composition. 11 points to 1. Can f do anything with 1? Yeah, what does it do with 1? It turns it into 2. So following the arrows, 11 ultimately leads to 2. Okay, so here is our composition this direction. Okay, notice these are completely different functions, right? We said before, a composition was not commutative. It matters what order you compose functions, right? Generally. Not always, but generally. Okay, as uh, ordered pairs, this is what we're going to have. 2, 7, 11, 2. Okay, it's probably even easier to see now that these two functions are, you know, these two composition, composed functions are completely different. Okay, well, I hope that helps. I'm going to reference some of this stuff in my next video also. Okay, hope you understood it.